Tap into Salesforce security, navigating OAuth flows with a beer garden analogy. I find that analogies can help me both understand complicated things and they can help me explain complicated things by breaking it down into things we've experienced in our real life. And in this case, I had the pleasure of living in Munich and went to a couple of Oktoberfests and I'm going to use going to a beer garden as an analogy for some of the basics of OAuth flows. In a previous video, I talked about how a user using a browser straight to Salesforce really is doing either direct login or single sign-on flows. However, if they're using an intermediary client, such as a mobile device, then that becomes an OAuth flow or if they're using their browser, going to another web, third-party web server, which is then hitting Salesforce. That's an OAuth flow. Additional OAuth flows could include just a straight integration user. You're doing an OAuth with a client doing a designated person user, or getting down to device or asset flows. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be introducing some of the key terms, but using it in the analogy of a beer garden. So, if I'm at a beer garden and I want to get some beer, I may walk over to what's called the resource server. That is the place that has the beer I want, the, the keg of beer. And they're going to go, you, we don't know who you are and you need to show ID. So go up to the authentication server. So depending on the flow, you may or may not get a redirect. But basically coming in cold, you cannot go straight to the resource server and get your secure data. Now I'm the resource owner and I believe I have a right to that data. Maybe I bought a ticket. For whatever reason, I want to get to that secure data. So now I go and a human can't go talk to the resource server. So I have a client. Um, that's my little uh, serving robot, automatic serving robot. And I've learned the rules and I give the robot my credentials, my username and password, and my client then calls the authentication server showing my credentials. And what comes back to me through my client is an access token, a wrist bracelet. This access token wrist bracelet is only good for a short period of time usually designated, you know, it could colored or it'll go bad in a, in a couple of hours. And then what I do is my client then presents the access token to the resource server. Now the resource server, um, the bartender, the person running the desk has the ability to check that access token and make sure that that access token is still valid hasn't expired, um, and then if it is, then the, um, the resource server will go get the secure data under the credentials of the resource owner, which is me. So based on, it, it will then act with my credentials, pull back the necessary data, and send it back, and there's my little beer mug, and sending back to the resource owner. So this is the flow going in and I'm following this as standard username and password flow, where the first step is presenting credentials, getting to the authentication server, getting back the access token, and then representing those credentials to the resource server and getting the, the requested data. Now for the duration of the wrist bracelet, the access token, you do not need to go back to the authentication server. So if you had a, let's say, typical eight hour um, duration on your session access token or session token, then that risk bracelet could be good for a number of hours to con continue to go straight to the resource server and get more of what you want, more beer, more food, more of your Salesforce data. Now, what'll happen is at some point, that access token will expire. And then what will happen is the resource server will say that is no longer a valid access token and it'll give an error. So in that situation, then the resource owner needs to know to use their client to represent their credentials again 
to the authentication server to get a newer access token. And then once you get the new access token, then you can then shift back to the resource server and present your data. Now this is a username password flow um, where each time the session expires, you got to represent the username and password credentials. Now there are reasons why um, Salesforce is de-emphasizing the use of this and we'll be going over that in subsequent videos. And there are additional other OAuth flows that we'll be walking through additional videos. But these are your key terms. Resource owner, which is the person who want the user, the human who wants the data. The client, which is a piece of software acting on your behalf. The authentication server, the credentials, the access token, the resource server and the secure data. In subsequent videos, will be A, going deeper into details, actually giving you the detailed parameters and other uh, technical um, piece of information you need. We'll also be going over additional flows. We just focused in on username and password, where you're presenting your credentials each and every time. There are different ones, um, web server flow, device flow, JWT flow. So we'll be um, explaining those in more detail. Thank you for joining. I hope your OAuth flows free. Join again, same bat time, same bat channel, and subscribe to Steve TechArk. Go to our website, join the YouTube channel, and be ready for more deep dives into security and other Salesforce topics.